I'm Janine Parker, an artist in residence in the dance department at Williams College and one of this week's Pillow Scholars in Residence. And look who is on stage with us. <laughs> Hello. Hi, everyone. Um, this is... You're welcome. <laughs> Desmond Richardson, the one, the only, a co-founding artistic director of Complexion's Contemporary Ballet. <laughs> Meg Paul, who has also had a really extraordinary career, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, Academy, Complexion's Academy director and new role associate artistic director of Complexion. Um, Desmond, I want to ask you, as um, everyone in the company is unique, but certainly you are one of the most unique dancers, and your um, aesthetic um, certainly set the tone and the look for the company. And I just want to know um, what dancing, what role dancing has in your life these days, and as artistic director, um, what your focus going forward might be. Well, to your prior uh, question, the role that dancing has for me at this particular time, because I'm not performing like I used to, uh, it's giving back. It's really just giving back to those uh, folks who need it. Uh, someone paid it forward to me. Many people paid it forward to me, actually. And uh, it is an immense pleasure to pay it forward to these young people. And uh, not only in the company, but throughout the world that I'm teaching and being a giving these opportunities to teach so many other people and give them, you know, like uh, maybe techniques of performance. I don't want to teach anybody anything. Like, I don't claim to know so much, but I do know certain things, and which is uh, bringing the passion and uh, your humanness forward. That's something that Dwight and I talk about a lot, the, the human experience and that they're unique, necessary, and valid and that there is a space for each one of the dancers here, for sure, and everywhere that we feel. Since you've brought um, Dwight Roden into the conversation, Dwight Roden is not on stage here with us right now, but I think it's spirit Dwight Roden is on stage yeah. with us. Um, I, one of the questions I'll be asking each of you, and we're going to get to a little bit of your um, history of the company, Meg, in a moment, um, but since you mentioned Dwight, um, one of the things he's been called is a dancer's choreographer, and I wonder if any of the pieces that were on tonight's program, maybe hissy fits? Did you dance in any of them? Yes. I'm an original for that one. <laughs> I'm actually the original soloist that, the, that, that Joe was doing um, with the two couples that start. So yeah, I, absolutely. Dwight Ronan is a dancer's choreographer for sure. Um, we both have had the uh, great, uh, uh, amazing opportunity to, to be in the room with Dwight while he's working and, choreographing and myself having more intimate setting with like him choreographing and making sure that uh, movement was coming through and allowing me to speak and then allowing for my technical prowess to speak his work. And to me, that's the biggest responsibility and just the joy and honor that I have had as a, a dancer and performer and not only his work, but others' works as well. That's really important for me. And we try to share that with the dancers to make sure that they're showing up for the directors, because uh, for the choreographers, because they only get a chance to speak when they speak with their movement, right? So that was, um, yeah, it's really quite profound. I think about it now. I'm kind of pondering a little bit that I think about that, uh, the many, many years that Dwight and I have worked together and that um, we've shared in this this uh, almost 29 years now, going into 30th. So that's like Time a lot. flies when you're having Time fun. Time flies, for sure. But it's, a, it's an immense pleasure. Thank you. Meg, you told me, um, and we'll share in case um, everyone hasn't read all the bios, um, that you did dance with the company in the early days before a certain very big opportunity with Twyla Tharp came a knock -in. So, um, you, you know, you came back to the company um, in other roles, including, as I said now, um, the Academy Director and Associate Artistic Director. So could you speak a bit about maybe, as, as Desmond just did, dancing in some of the pieces, but, and or um, how your role has changed over the years, over the decades? 
Um, it's just been such an incredible journey with Dwight and Desmond for almost as long as the company has existed. So an, an incredible honor for me to be a part of the company as a dancer and having you know, had a career through the Joffrey Ballet and then so, so many similarities, the Joffrey Ballet, Mr. Joffrey, Gerald Arpino, Dwight and Desmond. Um, and and in the, the vision that Dwight and Desmond had was something that really spoke to me um, in terms of how they bring the individual as the artist and really curate a space for everyone and that uniqueness. So having the opportunity to be in the company for, for a short period of time, but it was very profound because also um, the way in which Dwight creates movement and the specificity and the polyrhythms and the way in which, you know, moving on and off, which has now sort of um, become the technique of the company and the official technique of our academy, Neek. And so this was something, you know, I was so, so enthralled with, not only in my, you know, physicalizing it myself, but watching how the company members were, you know, morphing as they were learning this choreography and the technique that that underlies it. And so then coming in, um, when, I, when my husband and I moved to Detroit to run the music hall, and I was um, a professor at uh, Wayne State University, Dwight and Desmond said, let's, let's bring the academy to Detroit, which we did for, for many, many years, uh, and also bringing the company. And through that, really just starting to learn even more about the importance of Neek, the technique that um, is the foundation of complexions that we're now bringing around the world. So, yes. Thank you both. Um, I, I guess with both of your you know, long histories in the field, um, I wonder if one or both of you can speak about what you have seen, maybe the macro view or the micro view of how dance um, has changed over the decades or ballet, that's the maybe micro view. Um, you know, one of the quotes of the, in your website is, um, the world is starting to look more and more like complexions. So. Can you talk about some of the ways in which the field has changed? Yes, I, in my opinion, I just think that it's nice that, to see an amalgam of dance happening where it's not so separate. You know, back in the day when we were starting in 1994, uh, we were asking our friends from American Ballet Theater and Blondell Cummings and Jennifer Muller, you know, to come and work. But folks were not working together, really. Um, it wasn't like, a, it was not a thing. And it became a thing, which we didn't know it was like that. We just wanted to kind of be in the room with each other. So it's uh, so nice that ballerinas were in the room with sort of modern-esque dancers, which is now contemporary dance. Uh, but it wasn't that. It was just uh, something that Dwight and I just really believe that dance starts here, and then it's all of these different facets. You know, we came from the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater. So we were able to dance many different styles. So it wasn't a thing to have like uh, an amalgam of movement, uh, not just one specific thing. And that's what we asked for the dancers. You know, it's, it's difficult actually, because nowadays um, I would say, actually it's not, I'm gonna co contradict myself, it's not, because many of the dancers actually can do so many things now. I think it's a norm. Uh, especially many of the dancers are coming from the convention world and really in the convention world is pretty phenomenal. Maybe yeah. that's actually, I'll direct you there, Meg, mm -hmm. and since you're both teachers, <laughs> absolutely. Um, how have dancers and dance education changed? Well, I, I, I love the space that we're in the, the you know, the forward and up mo places we're going in dance education. Um, I think that the mission and philosophy um, of complexions has been at the forefront of where we are going in dance education in terms of inclusivity, diversity, um, and and really celebrating everybody and and providing a space for everybody to to, to be to be learning, you know? So, uh, so yeah, watching that, it, it's interesting that you're talking about that too because, you know, I think we were also very versatile in our training um, and we certainly really value that and it's very important. Um, yet then when you see the um, students coming to Complexions Academy, it's really interesting because with Neek, you know, the, the foundation of ballet and all the different contemporary movements and things that they already possess and then bringing it into this very particular 
stylized way. And so showing them that way and that route is really fascinating. It's almost like learning a different language because they, you know, the sounds are there and the, the familiarity in certain ways, but the pathways are a little bit different. Anyhow, so just seeing, seeing how um, students really grow over either a two week uh, intensive or a year round intensive, and then preparing them for company life, which is, um, you know, super important as well too. So we're bringing in all those aspects where it's not like only certain people get to train this way. Everybody gets to train. And, um, but at the same time, you know, there is that, that um, the demand that is at being asked and they want, you know, students want that, you know, they want to be able to bring themselves to those levels. And so it's just a, it's a real um, honor for, for us to be those guides. Speaking to that level, just really quickly, like as we see that there are many uh, male identifying uh, on point, you know, and that's really important because that's not new. <laughs> that's just something, let's remember Louis XIV, heels, right? So, you know, like we think that that's so new. It's not. It's been around for a very long time. But the idea in classical ballet is that males don't dance on point, but that's not true. It's just, it's kind of, no, you don't do that. But for us, we were like, if you, it's, please train correctly. That's it. And then get on stage and, and kill it. That's it. I don't, I don't care about like, oh, and we don't want you, no, if you want to be in a two, two fine. We're no, we don't necessarily wear those. But uh, it's not uh, a, a gender situation for us. And I think that that's something that, uh, going back to what we talked about, where the world is looking more like complexions, we've always had that idea. Because the first ballet that we did, one of the first ballets was called Lies, that we did in this company. And it was 16 men on point, <laughs> me included, crunching up there. But you know, not, not like these folks that, that can do it so well. I, I, was, I trained well to do point, but not like that. But uh, yeah, but I did add it and tried to do my best. Uh, but I'm really just turned, really uh, inspired by the dancers today that can do that and do it with such specificity and such beauty. And um, they're not, they're just expressing themselves on point in a beautiful way. Here, here. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we have to talk about Stardust. <laughs> And um, I would like to um, have an audience member to be able to ask a question. So um, I guess I, 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 it might be a silly question. Did you know that it would be the hit, like it's becoming your signature piece? Dare I say it could be your revelations in the company. But, um, and I mean that all due respect. Um, <laughs> But you know, did you wonder, like, would younger generations, and no offense to younger generations, that you know, would they know the Bowie music? Would they, you know, um, groove to it the way some of us older people can groove to it? Um, did you know it would be the hit that it is? Well, interesting enough, um, when Meg and her husband Vince Paul said, "We want to underwrite it because if we, they did not underwrite it, it wouldn't be." So thank you, Meg and Vince. <laughs> at the Music Hall, and it had its premiere in 2016 at the Music Hall. Uh, and Dwight was saying that he called and said, I just keep having this dream about Bowie's music. And I was like, okay, what do you want to do? And we did know of uh, his wife, we had, uh, we know her and things like that. But we, we were trying to think, how can we get the rights and all of those things? So we went through this whole catalog and Dwight said, I really just want to start with Lazarus. He knew that right away. I know I want to start with Lazarus. I want to, I want to work on Space Oddity. I know what that is. Um, and he knew Modern Love. Like those were the first ones that he really was very clear on. And then others just evolved. I think the, the cast that we had in the room at that time, they brought something to it uh, once we solidified which pieces of music that we were going to use, then they just brought their character to it because we did say, hey, it's a show. It's like show. We're not afraid of that. Listen, we're in concert dance, but it's show business. You know, when it's time to show up, it's time to show up and out and perform. Yeah, there's, there's, it's okay. We're in a theater. 
right? There's been much on this stage, right? Me, I've sang on this stage, I've done so many things on this stage, I've done so many, so many things. But uh, we tell the company members like to, that may be in your arsenal when you have to perform and perform out. That's amazing because then you transport the audience. So it was very interesting for the dancers at that time to come through and just be like, yeah, I can just go forward. Yes, come beyond this tea light, tea, tea here, and go towards the audience and let the spotlight hit you. Um, and then it just evolved. I guess it just evolved and we were, it, I guess it's palpable to the audience and so there's this kind of cyclical thing that continues to happen and uh, we just found that uh, we were hopeful that uh, Mr. Bowie was gonna have an opportunity to see it but unfortunately he was very sick at that time and we did get message that go forward, go on and push it forward um, and we were very honored to just push that forward and, and to just give it to the next iteration of dancers that are coming forward. Has Elegy ever been performed or envisioned with a male soloist? Thank you for that. It hasn't because it was uh, choreographed, um, inspired by Dwight and I's moms, whom passed six months in before each, each one of them. Yeah, within each one of them. Um, yes, no males at this time. I have danced to that music. <laughs> this is the second iteration of that Moonlight Sonata. But uh, yeah, that was really in dedication for our mothers and Jillian Davis does an amazing job. Gosh, she just came to it and yes, for sure. From the word go, I've, I've known her since she was 14 years old at that height. Um, but from the word go, she's, all, she's always very open as an artist, as a young artist, she's very open and very intuitive. And so Dwight, um, is not always linear in his choreography, but within this one, he understood there was, he had a particular through line that he wanted to have resonate and have her speak it. Um, and so it's, for us, it's always very touching. It's hard for me to watch for some time, but when I watch it, I'm really just open and to receive whatever she's gonna give for that night, because it's quite spontaneous and we ask for her to just allow herself to just you know, the music and the, the moment to go over and take her over, and she does such an exceptional job of that. This is the third time this week I've seen um, the show, and in everything, of course, in live performance is different each time, and that's why, you know, you go more than once to things, but indeed, that comment about it's different each time, I have felt those very heartfelt, true, it, what, it's what makes it true each time. And I, I love that. I love waiting to see what she's gonna do with it each time. But how about a great round of applause? Thank you so much and thanks for the support.